everyone and welcome to Confederacy Live. This month's topic is Women in the War. Today we have a very special guest, Confederate spy known as Wild, Rose O'Neill Greenhow. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Camille. I'm really excited for the world to know my side of the story. Okay, everyone. So as you all know, America is engaged in a great civil war. At this point, it is unsure which side will win because both sides have had important victories. The President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, has just signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Miss Greenhow, tell us, what are your thoughts of slavery in America? Well, Camille, I can honestly say that I am a supporter of slavery. I have helped out Jefferson Davis on multiple occasions. I am a secessionist, and I feel that slavery is important to our economy, and it is a necessity. What favors have you done for Jefferson Davis? I helped to win the Battle of Manassas by sending a message to General P.T. Beauregard, and Jefferson Davis was very thankful for that, mm -hmm. since it was a battle that we had to win. I am an important part of the Confederate spy network, and I have been able to pass along secret messages to Davis about the Union. Oh, was I supposed to keep going? No, but that's okay. That's okay, it's time to... Wow, that's amazing. I was wondering, has being a woman been a setback when you've tried to get information? Punishment? What kind of punishment did you receive for being a spy? I was put in jail not once, but twice. Where were you imprisoned? Well, the first time I was jailed, I was put in prison in my own home. Can you believe it? Jail in my own home. But the second time, I was imprisoned in a place called the Old Capitol Prison, which, as we prisoners called it, was called Fort Greeno. I was put in jail on August 23, 1861. It was a Friday. They took my young daughter Rose and I, and we were jailed in the fort for months. That first week was the worst. They had a guard in front of our cell, and a detective often came to inspect us. Besides Rose, I had absolutely no contact with my family. Air and exercise was limited, and the space that we had was small. The men in the prison often were drunk, and they would act violently towards women. I remember one occasion in which they were especially cruel towards a Negro servant girl. It was absolutely horrid, and I felt awful for my poor young daughter. My actions had caused her to be put in jail. But I supported the Confederate cause, and I did what I had to do, and wanted to do to get involved in the war. Wow, I can't believe they treated you that badly. And all because that was the only way you could get involved. So you felt that this war was important to your Confederacy? I think the war was very important. The Union was determined to bring an end to slavery and to keep the halves of our nation together. But that is not what the Southern states wanted. We wanted to be able to have our own rights and the Union was trampling on these rights. I think that the war was inevitable, and we had to fight it to get our freedom. Well, it has become clear to me and our audience that the war was incredibly important to you. What was your life like before the Civil War? I was born circa 1814 in Montgomery County in Maryland. My family owned a small plantation with a few slaves. I was one of five daughters, and you would think that having land and some girls to play and spend time with, that my childhood would have been a decent one. Found him in a ditch. Another slave who was with him, named Esther, told Jacob to kill my father, which he did. It was then that my family began to have trouble paying our debts, so my sister Ellen and I were forced to go live with our aunt and uncle in Washington, D.C., beginning in 1828. That's absolutely horrible! No child should have to go through those hardships. I'm sure everything got better eventually, as you got married. What was your life like with your husband and your family? When I was 26, I married Dr. Robert Greenhow, who was 43. By the time I was in my mid-30s, he and I had had four daughters together. Oh, you must have had a very nice family. But unfortunately, your husband died, right? In 1850, we left to go west. My husband died in San Francisco, and I decided to move back to Washington, D.C. It was then that I began to help out my friends, most of whom were politicians. I was very good friends with John Calhoun. I was able to help influence members of Congress so that my friends would get elected.
and then the war broke out. What did you do when the war started? Well, being a secessionist, I knew I had to take action. The Confederacy deserved their freedom. I was openly an advocate and an activist for the rebels. During the war, I became good friends with a Virginian who went by Thomas John Rayford. He was setting up a large spy network in the South, and he was able to get me started. So he's the one that got you on this path? What do you see yourself doing in the remainder of the war? Well, I am scheduled to go over to Britain and France to spread propaganda that supports the Confederacy. I am also thinking of writing a memoir to share my thoughts with the world. Well said, Rose. Thank you so much for being here today. Tune in next week for a special visit from Mary Chestnut. Goodbye!